Hi and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about how we interpret vectors as matrices. So you've probably seen vectors in another context, and I'm actually assuming you have a little bit of experience with vectors from probably a vector calculus course. And now we're just going to start thinking about our vectors as a matrix. So we'll take a vector and think about it as a matrix. Let's see what this looks like. So if we have a vector V that has M components, so V1 through Vm, this means that the vector V belongs to Rm, since it has M dimensions. This vector can be viewed as a matrix with dimensions M by one. So we can write V as a matrix with just a single column. So it's V1, V2, V3, all the way through Vm. And this matrix has dimensions M, since it has M rows, by one since it has one column. So this is pretty subtle. All we're doing is taking the vector that's normally written in component form with those angle brackets in a horizontal way. And now we're writing it as a matrix as a vertical column. So this is often called a column vector. We normally write vectors as columns in this way when we're thinking about them as matrices. Then everything we're used to with vectors will also work when they're written in matrix form. And doing this is actually kind of our basis for how we define a lot of matrix operations. We're just gonna look at them now with vectors, but this will come back when we start to do more things with bigger matrices. So for example, we can do addition with vectors. So vectors can be added as long as they have the same dimension, M. So if we have two vectors in Rm, then we can add those vectors, V plus W, by writing out the one vector plus the other in matrix form. So I have V1 through Vm plus W1 through Wm. And we add these two matrices, these two column vectors, by just adding the elements. So the first row is now V1 plus W1. The second row is V2 plus W2, all the way through Vm plus Wm. So this works just the way you'd want it to. You just add the matching elements. So in this way, we add each element as we would in component form. I like to think that if no one told you this and you had no idea how adding matrices worked in this way, this is probably what you would guess would happen and you're exactly right. We're going to see something similar for scalar multiplication. So we can take a vector and scale it by some value alpha, which is a real number. So when we take that vector and scale it by alpha, we do alpha times V, then we would write alpha times that column vector, which then gets distributed. So the alpha gets distributed to each element. So we have alpha V1, alpha V2, all the way through alpha Vm. And so this works as you would expect. We just distribute alpha to each element as we would in component form. So again, if you didn't know how to do this, I imagine this is probably what you'd guess and you're exactly right. So even though this might be sort of straightforward and maybe even obvious, I just like to do it so that you really see that we can do this in our new matrix notation. Lastly, I just wanna talk about a way that we can interpret a matrix with this new vector idea. So if we have a matrix that is N columns and M rows, so its dimensions are M by N, then we can interpret it as having N column vectors. So we can think of each column as a vector, V1 through Vn. And these would be an element in Rm since they have M rows. So let me show you what that looks like. If I have my matrix here, it has M rows and N columns. We can think of each column as a vector. So that first column is like our V1 vector. Then that second column is our V2 vector. And we do that all the way till we get to the last column, the nth column and this would be our Vn vector. So rather than having the large matrix that is a lot to write out, we can just start talking about each column as a vector and we really only have to write one thing for each column. So we can write a shorthand version of the matrix as V1, V2, all the way through Vn. And with the vector symbol above those letters, we know that these are a column vector. And so the matrix has a lot of information in it. We just write it in this shorthand way. 
So I just mentioned this because it's a new way for us to write out matrices that's faster, and it's also just a different way to interpret them. So if we have a collection of vectors, we could think of them in a matrix in this way by making each column a new vector. And we're going to see this come up as we start to learn some new concepts. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.